there is an element of danger when it comes to riding a bike. Being on two wheels means that crashes can happen and they do happen. Yeah, trust us on this one. So in this video, we are gonna go through some of the common crashes and hopefully give you some tips to help you avoid them, aren't we, Connor? We are, yeah. And well, we've got quite a lot of experience when picking up some of the points in this video and Hank's lost quite a lot of skin as a result. Yeah, this video has been years and years in the making. Lots of loss of skin. So make sure you give it a thumbs up, hey Connor? Yeah. Right, let's get to crashing, shall we? Oh gosh, here we go. Well, avoid it anyway. Yeah. Okay, let's kick this video off with badly surfaced roads. Now, badly surfaced roads can really be one of the main causes of crashes. First up, I'd really recommend scanning the road ahead, looking out for any imperfections, and finding a line you can pick to avoid those badly surfaced roads. Next up, if you're riding in a group, you want the other riders to try and signal to you if there's a pothole or anything you need to look out for on the road. It's a great way of communicating and all staying safe together. If you don't have the confidence to rely on other riders in a group, then what I say is maybe leave yourself a bit more space behind the rider in front. That way you'll have a bit more time to react to any last minute potholes. Now, this is definitely something I've been caught out with in the past. Yeah, this normally happens when you lean into a corner, bank the bike over, start to pedal, and your pedal clips the tarmac, sending your rear wheel into the air and causing you to take a lie down on the tarmac and have, well, an unplanned rest. Yeah, no one wants one of those unplanned rests, do they? No. So when you're heading down those descents or you're hitting some sharp corners, or even you're doing a sharp change of direction, make sure your outer pedal is at six o'clock and your inside pedal is at 12 o'clock. That way you're further enough from the ground so there's no chance of you hitting your pedal on the tarmac. And make sure you give yourself enough time when you exit the corner before you start pedaling. And I think this is a common mistake by many of us. That's how I got caught out. Yeah, when you're panicking in a race You don't lose the wheel. You don't so, want to lose the wheel. You pedal hard, and before you know it. And you could also take out all your teammates. I think that's what happened to me too. Unless you're riding off-road or on a circuit or track, then it's inevitable that you're going to come into contact with other road users. Cars, trucks, and the list goes on. Hmm, my car needs a clean. A common mistake that some cyclists make is that we ride a little bit too close to traffic when out on the road. And this leaves us little time to react to things like a car door suddenly opening in front of us, or maybe a car turning in the, oh, in the road. Oh, James. Oh, sorry, man, I didn't see you. Oh, look where you're going. Like, let's try and prevent these hands in the face moments. And a top tip is to look out for indicators or try and make eye contact with other road users. That way you can give yourself enough reaction time. So if a car door does open, well, you can swerve around it. God, look in your mirror next time. Man. Sorry, man. Anyway, I'm done with my ride. Sorry, dude. Sorry. Riders taking selfies out on the bike can stop them from scanning the road for potholes and other hazards. Sending a Snapchat to your mates is a quick, far way to run into a lamppost and hurt yourself. Hank, what are you Got doing? That. Stop that. Oh, sorry, keep mate. Try to keep using your electronic devices to an absolute minimum when it comes to riding your bike. This will distract you, and you could end up looking at your phone and veering off into a hedge, bush, or hitting another road user. So if you do want to use your electronic device, I would pull over, check your messages, or even check the direction and route you're going. So, put this in your back pocket. That way, all your attention is looking forward and where you're going. You fly down in descent at breakneck speed to be met with a corner you just weren't expecting. You chuck on the brakes for the last minute. You miss your braking point and it throws you offline. So you resort to a bank, a hedge, a pond, or something like Connor to slow you down. Descents and corners. Well, they're one of my favorite parts of cycling. The speed, the adrenaline of exiting that corner with a smile on my face, but well, 
there's been plenty of times when I've mischarged those quarters and ended up, well, on my ass in a ditch somewhere without a smile on my face. Right, get out there, mate. We, uh, we got a ride to do. You all right? Yeah, you might need a bit of a hand, actually, Hank. Yeah, um, I think we need a, a crane to get you out of there. A, a big crane. <laughs> the crane's just arrived. Got it. I got into here by myself. <laughs> I'll get myself out. <laughs> This is how Hank spent most of his races. Oh, 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 yeah, I'm on there. There's a few things that you can implement to help alleviate some of the risk when it comes to misjudging corners. If you're riding in a group, this is a great way to use the rides in front of you to gauge what the corners are like. If the rides are slamming on the brakes ahead of you, there's a good chance that it's a tight corner and you need to scrub off a bit more speed. If the rides in front of you are carrying speed through the corner, then it could be a sweeping corner so you can carry a bit more speed through it. If you're on your own, I would ride within your ability. Keep safe, scrub off more speed than you need. That way, if you come to any corners that you're not expecting, you can handle it nice and easily. Being able to ride close to other riders has a whole host of benefits. And the main one is being able to slipstream, meaning you can save energy and effort and share the workload with your riding buddies. However, riding close to other riders brings with it a whole host of hazards and coming into contact with another rider is the main one. Yeah, it has to be said though, the closer to the rider in front of you, the more energy you're gonna save, but it's also gonna increase the risk. A common mistake a lot of cyclists make is overlapping the wheel in front of you and suddenly, the front rider changed direction, swerves a pothole or a hazard in the road, takes your front wheel out and you end up hitting the deck. Or even worse, the rider in front slams on their brakes, giving no warning whatsoever to the rider behind. So what we want to do is try to avoid overlapping the wheel in front of you. But you can also give yourself more space to the rider in front so you have more time to react if their movements do change. But at the same time, the emphasis is on that front rider to communicate and signal to the rider behind what they're gonna do if they're gonna change their line, maybe slam the brakes on or even get out of the saddle. The more you can communicate that to the rider behind, the best chance they'll have of avoiding a crash. Just getting out of the saddle here, mate. Thanks, mate. Oh, that's better. First and foremost, we want to try and avoid puncturing in the first place. So if you see debris on the road or riding next to the curbs or even potholes or glass, try and avoid it if you can. But sometimes we just can't avoid a puncture. So what do you do? How do you stay upright if you start to lose the air from that front tire and you end up riding the rim? Well, first and foremost, Hank, what I'd say is to try not to panic and try not to change your direction. So if you hear that you've punctured or you feel the air coming out of your tires, then try to keep the same line and not change from that. Also, if you've punctured on the front wheel, you wanna try and shift your body weight to the rear of the bike, taking the weight off that front wheel, meaning you'll be able to scrub off that speed and brake a lot more safely. And then once you come to a stop, you could then have time to change your tire. Hey, Connor. You will, yeah. And get back on the road. Mm. City riding is great for so many different reasons. It's great for commuting, it's great for beating the traffic, but with cities come congestion, comes more traffic, comes more people, equals more hazards. So what we would say is when you're riding in a city, you come to junctions and stoplights and roundabouts, make sure you take good care in looking left and right before you proceed. Yeah, and another good tip is to always try and make eye contact with other road users and not just assume that they've seen you. And because the city is so busy, it's gonna take you longer to get where you want to go. So try and take things easy. Don't rush it too much. Everyone's always rushing in the city and this is what can lead to accidents. Another, lastly, another good tip is to try and plan your route in advance. Look out for any bike paths that you could take, which may circumvent really busy roads. So you're not hitting those real kind of hot spots for traffic. Yeah, but golden rule, don't race through a town. It's just not worth it. You're better off taking your time and then hit in those lanes or quieter roads, hey? Yeah. So in summary, keep safe while out on the open road. Have good observation. Look out for other road users, but most importantly, ride within your ability. 
Yeah, and I hope these tips have helped you avoid crashing in some of the ways we've discussed in this video. And if they have done, please let us know in the comment section below. Yeah, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if it's helped, and we'll see you in the next video. Um, hopefully I'll influence some of those tips. Yeah, yeah just keep working on Thanks, that. Thanks, mate. Yeah, You'll get cheers. there in the end. Yeah, yeah, I'll leave you there. Thanks, mate. Bye. I'm working on him. <laughs>